feels like it's got more mass. Yeah. And if I can retain that and move it, then you're accelerating or moving mass. Mass times acceleration equals force. So with the CSD method of, um, of practice, regardless of whatever the strike is, be it punch, kick, elbow, shoulder strike, knee, whatever it is, we always use the same principle. Okay, so because CST method is a system to be able to, in my opinion, utilize the musculoskeletal system, the skeleton, as efficiently as possible. To be able to utilize the joints as efficiently as possible, be it for combat, be it for striking, or be it for any kind of movement, be it for holding a baby, hiking, whatever. Okay, hey John. So, um, so that's why we use the same principles, same things, okay? But we're gonna put those principles into practice um, with different exercises, different strikes, okay? So, what's important for power? What's important? Relaxation. Tension, good balance, relaxation, why is that? <coughs> More mass behind it, very good answer, yeah? What else is important? Coordination. What's that? Structure. Structure, yeah? Anything else? Coordination. Coordination, yeah? How about, um, how about speed? How does that work though? How does relaxation enable you to give more mass out? Because your mass is here. I'm standing on 70 kilos. I'm standing 70 kilos out. But how can, how can I give mass out? We all hear it. We all say it. But how does it work? Transmit it. Transmit it? From wherever you, how you relax it comes back Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can feel it when we do it. But what actually happens is that there's a lot of theories. Look, ultimately, Chosh and Tim would say that he's using the ligaments rather than the muscles. Um, now that's another subject, we'll, say, we'll look at a simpler explanation. When you can mindfully relax the joints, okay? Relaxation means so, di a different thing to every single person here. We all say relax, but what is relaxation really, right? Mindful relaxation equals to joint deep compression. So if I, can, if I just go like this, and I, go, okay, I, can relax, I can relax everything here, this is useless relaxation. Lying on the couch is useless, re not useless, but it's not the mindful relaxation I'm talking about. Right now, if this thing disappeared, my arm's gonna fall down. And if force comes into this, I can't hold it. So someone said structure is very important, right? But how do you retain structure while, you, while with relaxation? That's almost a contradiction. How do you retain relax? Uh, so it's different to the, like a boxer's relaxation. Every, every good boxing coach will say relax. Every good martial arts uh, instructor says relax, right? But their idea of relaxation is very different to what I'm talking about. And to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if everyone sitting or standing, if you put up your tansa, a proper tansa, so not sort of floppy, anything like that. Now with the other hand, with the other hand, touch your bicep uh, and or your tendons here where your upper arm bone and, and forearm separates. While you're not, you know, not floppy, while you're holding a proper tansa, can you completely let that, let that muscle go? Let the bicep fully relax and let the tendon open up? If the answer is no, then that area hasn't mindfully relaxed in the way that I'm talking about. So mindful relaxation is a tangible thing. Uh, Someone, an outsider, without having to push onto you. Like, it's not like, okay, when you relax, you can go like that, someone bounces away. Why isn't it like that? Because we can have a compliant partner. For example, you move, if you go like that, you just move your arm forward. I can go like this, right? And put it on camera, everyone starts clapping, get a lot of likes. But that, was, that wasn't really him doing anything, right? So we can't be result or goal oriented to test our relaxation. It's gotta be something that you feel for yourself and someone else can touch your body and feel the opening, okay? Yeah, so if you feel this, just to give you an idea, and I, whoever is, hasn't touched hands with me before, I highly recommend you come and feel this, because once you feel it, you believe it, and then you've got something to work towards. So that's like if you hold your arm like this, right? Right now, there's nothing. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not tensing, I'm not relaxing, this is a normal bicep of holding a tongue set, right? And then as I say, if you want to come and hold, the, if you put your hand on my upper back, so put your palm on my upper back. Because it's very much related to Taegong and Sink, the opening of the spine, which I'll talk about in a second. So from here, if I just try to think about it, so this is, Master Choi would say, the reason we get this control over our muscles is because we're using a different part of the brain, the back part of the brain, and we call that the Ning Tao area. Ning Tao area can only be activated through the openness of the spine, which is why I'm getting it to hold my spine, okay? So if, I, if, if without that, that's why when I said, can you relax your bicep? You guys said no, because you're using a different part of the brain, not the Ning Tao part, okay? 
okay? So if I use my normal part, analytical part, the front load thinking, and I was thinking, okay, relax, I'll probably, I can move it, I can do stuff with it, but it won't let go, right? But if I start now, f f the steps of Taekong, everyone knows what Taekong and Sing is? Yes, no? Who doesn't know what it is? Hands up, because it's the most important thing, and without that, okay, good, everyone knows. So if I Taekong first, and then Sing, and now if I think about it relaxing, yeah, so now that relaxes, and the tendon here, while I'm holding the arm, that relaxes also. Now, if you put some pressure on this, so hold there and put some pressure on this. If it's normal like this, right, and as you put more pressure, if I try to touch my chest, that joint is acting like a normal tense joint, right? Whereas, again, if as you're putting pressure on, if I start to go do something like this, I think, yeah, that, that's it. At that point, if I go, yeah, now at that point, as you hold strong, yeah. that joint is very, very free to move. Yeah. You can move wherever it wants, yeah. okay? So that's, it's not BS, it's not like this, oh, yeah, just relax. No, it's actual openness of the joint. It's actual relaxation. Did you feel any changes in the spine as I was... Yeah, like something's moving up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, muscles actually relaxing. What's moving up is the is the is the joints of the spine is like this. The vertebras are like that, and this is happening. Without this, the muscles of the back can't relax. We can't access this area, and therefore we can't relax these joints to the way we want. You can loosely relax it. There's a difference between someone punching like this and someone punching like that. But this still isn't that mindful relax. It's a, it's a much better punch than this but it's still not the mindful relaxation that I'm talking about. We want the openness of the joints under pressure. So right now I have to deal, the reason why we can't usually relax is thinking about here is because we require this area to support the forearm, being at half a kilo or whatever, because we're always fighting gravity. But if I let it, let it go, this will happen. But that's what I'm saying. With mindful relaxation, you can retain structure, right? Retain this, so this, if this is the structure, you can retain it, but you just go like that. It just opens. So you don't have to change. In Wing Chun, is a big, big misconception that if someone's like doing something like from here, someone's, let's say you've got bongs out, someone pulls down, you have to do something like that. Or someone pulls down, you have to do that and then you have a technique and go like that. There's nothing wrong with that. And we can do that as well. We have all of these things in dummy form. But if you can open the body up like that, as you start to pull down, yeah, suddenly pull down, the suddenly you can't pull down my bongs down. And at that point, I can actually still go forward, which means you can strike through the incoming force. Isn't that more, if you're talking about Wing Chun's about efficiency, isn't that, isn't that much more efficient than having to go like that? Right? So we're talking about efficiency in that when you mindfully relax the joints, the, the incoming force doesn't affect it that much. Therefore, that's the most uh, effortless and efficient way to, if, if the person can't affect you, or when you're, right now we're going to be hitting pads and hitting each other, when you're striking something, if the rebound force doesn't affect the joints in the same way, that means you theoretically, and I'll explain it, I'll demonstrate it, you could even jump up in the air like this and punch like that and get the same power than when you're connected as, as when you're connected to the ground, or you could stand like this and hit and it'll be just as hard. So if you think that's why there's all this thing about one inch punch, we don't need momentum, etc. If that stuff is true, why isn't every martial art doing it? Because it's not an easy thing, it's not an easy control to have over your body. Okay, and that's what we'll I hope today you guys get a better idea of how, at least in striking, you can, um, you can bring that forward. So, how does relaxation uh, connect the body uh, or enable you to access your mass? Through the fact that if someone is, if you hold your talons out, if, if just with one finger I go like that and I'll say, okay, uh, bring your, with that movement of the mass, right? He's just moving the joint. If I say, touch your own chest, right? Touch your chest, try to touch your chest, touch your pen. Try, try, try. It's hard, isn't it? Right? Why is it hard? Because now there's a platform in which I can enter my force there. I can dump my force here because that's a tension point, and therefore that's cut off uh, his own forearm to the rest of his mass. He can't use his mass at this point. Does this make sense? It's like if you've got a hose, right, and you and it's someone's holding. Or if you've got a straw, you try to suck through it. Someone's holding it. So when you can open like that, even under pressure. That means the force is no longer dealing, they're getting dumped there, it's dealing with what I was doing with the bonsai. It's no longer just here, usually people like this, right? It's dealing with more joints than one. So it's dealing with more sections or areas of my body, more clumps or chunks of my body, rather than this usual, if you pull down on me, this usual thing. In which case I have to be, I mean, even bodybuilders, the strongest person here, if, unless you can do this, this is a very dangerous thing. You can tear your rotator cuff if you're muscularly doing it, right? So that's why 
And then because, because he's, I'm targeting everything with this strength there, right? Whereas when it's like that, as you pull down, suddenly you feel up. Even if I go up, down, suddenly it's, it feels like it's got more mass. Yeah. And if I can retain that and move it, then you're accelerating or moving mass. Mass times acceleration equals force.